On March 21st, Standard Rotation will finally come to Pokemon TCG Live, removing all e-block cards from the format. As a result, a lot of the decks as you know them will change, and some decks like Mew VMAX will be gone forever. In this video, I'll be showing off what the current best decks in format look like post-rotation, with all of the data based off of Japanese tournament results. This means I can't be wrong about anything because it's not my personal opinion. So no one in the comments can make fun of me three months from now for my god-awful take on something like Energy Sticker. If you thought people on Reddit complained about Charizard EX too much now, wait until rotation hits. Since there's very little actually taken away from Charizard with the loss of e-block cards, it remains an absolute powerhouse that just gets better each time your opponent takes a knockout. And the best partner post-rotation is still Pidgeot EX, which as we all know, lets you go and get any card from your deck each turn. And let's not forget that Path to the Peak no longer exists, so Charizard and Pidgeot will always have access to their abilities. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. There's very few changes that need to occur with post-rotation Charizard. Battle VIP Pass is gone, so you just replace it with Buddy Poffin. While Buddy Poffin can't get Rotom via Radiant Charizard, it does place any two Pokemon with 70 hit points or less directly onto your bench. And unlike Battle VIP Pass, it works throughout the entire game. The only other noteworthy new card is your Ace Spec. While we all thought Prime Catcher would be the default for everyone, Maximum Belt is a much better choice. Boosting the damage you deal to other EXs by 50, perfect for helping out Charizard both early and late in the game. I've also seen a few players in Japan run a copy of Mist Energy. The Pokemon it's attached to becomes immune to effects of attacks, meaning Roaring Moon's Frenzy Gouging is useless against them. It can definitely help with that matchup, but it will require a lot of testing to see if you truly need it to beat Roaring Moon post-rotation. And that's it. Aside from Buddy Poffin and Maximum Belt, your deck will largely remain the same as it is now, with the added benefit of not having to deal with Path to the Peak. For the second best deck in our post-rotation format, we have... Charizard EX again. But this time with Babarel. Realistically, the only difference between the Pidgeot and Babarel builds is the use of Technical Machine Evolution. You use Buddy Poffin to get your basics down early, play Arvin to get TM Evolution and whatever item you need, then end your turn by evolving your Charmander and Bidoof. You still use Rare Candy, but it's not as necessary, and you don't have to worry about TM de-evolution nearly as much. While the list you just saw is extremely powerful on its own, there's a few changes you might consider. Squavit always pairs well with Babarel, and you can even chuck in a copy of Nymphomaniac's Deciphering to guarantee any two cards you want off the top of your deck. For alternate attackers, Gouging Fire EX gives you a potential 260 damage attack on turn 2, helping you to get ahead early. And Entei V is just always nice to have access to. Regardless of which version of Charizard EX you choose to play post-rotation, both are shaping up to be powerhouses. But who cares about Charizard? What if you want to use a Pokemon with swords in its mouth? Enter Chen Pao EX. While Chen Pao has fallen a bit in the pre-rotation meta we currently find ourselves in, if Japan is any indication, it'll be back with a vengeance at the end of March. All the top Chen Pao decks are pretty much the same, with only a few cards changing between them. It's either two or three copies of Chen Pao EX, either a 3-2 or 3-3 line of Bax Calibur, a copy of Iron Hands EX, and either one or two copies of Lightning Energy. If you're playing Chen Pao right now on Standard, the post-rotation build won't require much change in strategy. Buddy Poffin is the VIP pass replacement, and Prime Catcher is effectively our Cross Witcher replacement. Add those and you're ready to dominate the format. The only things up to your discretion are whether or not to include a copy of the Kyogre that snipes 180 damage and puts 3 energy back into your hand, whether to play a copy of Arctabax to prevent de-evolution issues, and whether or not you want to include a copy of the Pokemon Go Barrel, which helps against Snorlax and Great Test Mill. Giratina is a top deck post-rotation, but not with Lost Box. According to early Japanese results, just like my feet, Arceus Giratina is one of the best pairs you can play with. The common theme with all the best post-rotation decks is that rotation doesn't really do anything to hurt them. Path to the Peak leaving makes multi-prize ability decks so much better, and it means Arceus Giratina can focus on its own strategy of being great. Insanely consistent turn after turn, Arceus Giratina runs a full 4-4 line of Arceus, a 2-2 Giratina, a 2-2 Babarel, one Squavit to make Babarel better, and one copy of Iron Leaves EX. The Iron Leaves is absolutely necessary in the deck, as it allows you to one-shot a Charizard EX or Roaring Moon EX thanks to weakness. Just keep in mind that the ability only activates when you play it from your hand onto the bench. So Professor Turo's scenario becomes extremely important, as it can bring up an Iron Leaves you may have started. 
And Turo also helps bring up a damaged Pokemon, upping its usefulness. Maximum Belt is the ace spec of choice, allowing Arceus V-Star to one-shot a Roaring Moon EX even if double turbo energy is attached. A stadium isn't necessarily needed, but the one I've seen played the most in Japan is Pokemon Lead HQ, which annoys basic heavy decks. Elsewhere, Box of Disaster and Charon's Care are always options to add if you want, but that's about it. While it got off to a slow start, Golden Go EX has been rising in popularity in our pre-rotation meta thanks to the pairing with Palkia V-Star. Post-rotation, that marriage will continue, unlike my marriage to my ex-wife. What you're seeing right now is a tournament winning deck from Japan, and aside from a few cards, it's exactly the same list you'd see right now. You deal big damage with Golden Go, recycle the energy with superior energy retrieval, pick off weak bench setters with Radiant Greninja, and attack without discarding energy using Palkia V-Star. If it hasn't become apparent yet, this is one of the least negatively impactful rotations in recent history. The only new cards you'll find here are Buddy Poffin, Prime Catcher, Morty's Mind Blowers, and Nymphomaniac's Desire. The two new supporters, used properly, are great in Golden Go. If your opponent fills up their bench, Morty becomes a draw 5, though you do have to discard a card from your hand. And Cryptomaniac pairs perfectly with Golden Go's ability, allowing you to just draw whatever two cards you want. Again, as you'll notice, all of the top decks post-rotation rely on rule box Pokemon abilities, which only happens due to the removal of Path to the Peak. Obviously, we don't know what the 10 new free decks will be in PDCGL starting on March 21st, but even if none of these new cards are given away, it's still only like 1300 credits to make Golden Go a top deck post-rotation, and that's insane. Somehow, the unthinkable has happened. Lugia V-Star is back, baby! I know I kind of joked about it in my original Temporal Forces preview video, but the new Sinchino is an absolute game changer for Lugia post-rotation. This tournament winning list plays a 3-3 line of Sinchino while also throwing in a Master Ball. Lugia is just about the only deck I've seen play Master Ball as their A spec, and 3 copies of Mist Energy. Sinchino does 70 damage for each special energy card attached to it. That distinction is important as it means that Double Turbo and Reversal Energy don't add any additional damage. So in order to deal 280 damage with Sinchino, you'll need to have 4 energy cards attached to it, and that just so happens to be the number of energy 2 Archeops can accelerate each turn. Basically, Sinchino just replaces all of the other colorless attackers that Lugia would normally play, though this list did include a copy of Snorlax. Other options I saw are Morty's Conviction to help get Archeops into the discard pile, Mew EX as a backup attacker and a way to draw some cards, and Maximum Belt instead of Master Ball to help Lugia V-Star KO basic EX Pokemon, and to help Sinchino one-shot a Charizard EX. And now we come to the best of the rest. Lost Box, with and without Giratina, Gardevoir EX, Snorlax Block, and Miraidon EX have all underperformed in Japan. To be fair, tournaments there are best of one, which isn't great for Snorlax, but none of these decks have seen quite the level of success post-rotation that you may have expected, so I'll quickly go over some lists I saw for each of them. Lost Box Mirage Date swaps out VIP Pass for Buddy Poffin and adds in Prime Catcher as well as two copies of Emergency Board, which give your Comfey free retreat. Lost Box Charizard adds in two copies of Mimikyu and has access to De-Evolution and Crisis Punch. And the Giratina build uses Maximum Belt as its A spec to one-shot Charizard without needing to use Star Requiem, while also running a copy of Splup Ditto, which allows you to switch that Ditto with any basic in your deck, provided it's in the active and it's turn 1. As expected, Gardevoir EX takes a huge hit and must now focus on Drifloon and Screamtail as its attackers. The good news, you play less energy so there's more room in your deck for other cards. The bad news, no more baby Gardevoir for big one hit KOs. Snorlax is probably the deck in this group you should be the most afraid of. Misfortune Sisters mills items from your deck, Airy mills items from your hand, and Mantine's attack is the Echoing Horn replacement. If you were thinking about unsleeving your Minior, think again. And finally, the deck that has probably fallen the most, Miraidon EX. I feel like this is an anomaly and it'll do better over here, but the losses of Flaffy and Peony seem to have affected it quite a bit. Japanese players have resorted to running Regieleki VMAX to boost damage, with the rest of the strategy being the same. Hit as much energy off of Electric Generator and hit hard and fast. Because I'm lazy, and also because I want to trick you into watching my video next month where I essentially do the same thing that I did here, there aren't lists in the description for these. But if I had to guess, almost all of the new staple cards you need from Temporal Forces will be included in the new free decks beginning on March 21st, so upgrading your current decks for the new format will be easier than taking off a pair of socks with your teeth. 